Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is talk about universal apps. And this is something that's generated quite a bit of controversy within the Linux community, but it's a bit unfair because universal apps are a great thing, and in this video, I'm going to talk about it. But before I go any further, though, what exactly is a universal app? Well, as the name implies, a universal Linux app works on just about every Linux distribution, or at least the majority of Linux distributions. There's three different formats that are of varying levels of popularity, such as snap packages, flat packs, and app images. And all three of these formats have been featured on this channel, so if you want to learn how to use any one of those three, then I have a video that will teach you exactly that. In fact, in the description down below, I will give you direct links to those videos. Anyway, a universal application contains everything that it needs in one object. Now, if you've been using Linux for a while, you might be used to dependencies. That's just the way it's always been, and these are shared libraries. The idea being that if you need a particular library for one application, then maybe another application might have that same functionality or be able to benefit from that same library. And that helps developers in a way because shared libraries give them one library to use for a particular function, and then they could just focus on developing the rest of their application. However, the thing is, it really doesn't make it all that much easier for developers because with all the distributions that we have out there, if a developer wants to develop an app for Linux, then they'll probably have to develop an RPM, a deb package, but not just one deb or one RPM. There's other distributions that use debs and RPMs, various distributions that share package managers. It's just a lot for a developer to keep track of, but if they could only just develop one thing and then have that one thing be usable on every Linux distribution, then it's easier for them because they can get their job done a lot faster. Now, one of the great things about that is that developers are more likely to target the Linux platform if it's easier to develop for. And if they only have to develop one thing, well, what could be easier than that? I mean, it seems a lot easier, doesn't it? As a user, you only have to download one thing. And as a developer, you only have to develop one thing. So the problem here, at least one of the problems when it comes to universal applications, is that there's three different formats, like I mentioned earlier, and each of these three formats are soft competing for the dominant spot. Now, it's not necessarily the case that these particular formats are competing directly with one another, but they do all serve the same goal, so they are kind of competing in a sense, and even if they're not, you as the user, you might have to make a decision. When it comes to snap packages, that's a format that is spearheaded by Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu. So one downside when it comes to snap packages is that they're very specific to Ubuntu. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use them on other distributions, you certainly can. Even on the website for the product, it even shows you a list of distributions that is compatible for. So if you want to use snap packages on your distribution, all you have to do is go to the official website and follow the instructions. Once you do that, then you'll have access to snap packages. Now, the thing is though, if you use Ubuntu, then you already have snap packages. It's built into the distribution. And this brings me to one of the reasons why some people out there are very against universal packages. When it comes to snap packages, Ubuntu switched to that later on in the life of the distribution. It's a new thing and some people don't really appreciate that switch, but you know what? That's the way Ubuntu is going, like it or not. It's just the way forward for them. But I get it. If you don't like snap packages, then maybe that means that Ubuntu is no longer the distribution for you. But either way, one of the points of criticism about snap packages is that some users feel like they were forced upon them without their consent. Another thing that people don't generally like about snap packages is the proprietary nature of the platform itself. Since the project is spearheaded by Canonical, there's corporate ties to this technology, so some people just aren't really okay with that. But at the end of the day, when it comes to which of the package formats of universal apps to use, that decision is basically up to you. Next, let's switch gears and talk about Flatpak for a moment. Flatpaks are similar to snap packages, but they're not really specific to any one distribution. Now, this format does cater to the GNOME desktop a lot more than other desktop environments out there, but other desktop environments support Flatpak, so that shouldn't be an issue for you, the user. Flat packs are great for those of you that want to benefit from universal packages, but you might not be okay with Canonical. If that's the case, 
then flat packs might be a very good alternative for you. Now, just like snap packages, flat packs also require a runtime. Snap packages require SnapD, so you have to install that first. And then flat pack itself has to be installed first before you could use flat pack packages. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, most of the packages that you might be interested in when it comes to flat pack, most of them are going to be found on FlatHub, which is pretty much the tried and true app store equivalent of the flat pack format. There's even instructions on that website how to set up Flatpak if your distribution doesn't feature it. Some distributions do feature Flatpak out of the box, others don't. If you go to the website, it'll tell you which ones feature it and which ones don't, and then give you instructions to install it on supported distributions that don't already feature it. Now, another format when it comes to universal apps that I want to define in this video is the app image. And this is the one that I've covered most recently. And I have to say, I really love the way that app images are designed. Now, app images don't require a runtime. They just run. You literally download them, double click or single click, depending on your configuration, the file that you downloaded after marking it executable, and that's it. If you want to learn even more about app image, of course, you could check my video that'll cover everything you need to know about that format. But I really like the fact that we could download app images and run them in place, which also makes it very easy to throw all of your app image apps into a sync thing folder and have them synced across your computer. Since they're just files, you could do whatever you want with them. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv, or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Anyway, we've just defined three formats of universal applications. And I mentioned earlier in the video that there's a bit of controversy when it comes to universal apps. So what's going on? Well, I've already talked about the controversy surrounding the snap format. So I'm going to avoid mentioning all of that again. And instead, I'm going to talk about general things that are common between all three that some people just don't like. And the first problem isn't really a problem, honestly, I'll get to that in a minute. But the first complaint is that universal apps waste storage space. Now, to be fair, universal apps do use more space on your hard drive. They include everything they need in one place, in one object. So yes, they are going to be larger when compared to normal Linux packages. However, and this is no offense to anyone out there, I promise, this is such a silly complaint. I mean, seriously. When you look on Amazon, for example, you can buy a 512 gigabyte SSD for 20 US dollars. Therefore, the space argument against universal apps really isn't an argument because they don't waste enough space to fill an entire drive, and they don't even waste an egregious amount of space either. Sure, it might use 100 extra megabytes, but the people that are complaining about this, I'd bet that their log files are not maintained, and they probably have multiple gigabytes of wasted space in their log directories, and I think that would be a much better place to point the finger when it comes to a waste of storage space. However, one complaint against universal apps that's absolutely valid is the theming issue. To summarize, the issue is when you run a universal app, it'll look different than any other app on your system. That's not always going to be the case. It depends on the universal app that you're using, how it's developed, things like that. But there is going to be a bit of inconsistency, and this is a definite legitimate problem but it's a temporary one, we'll get there. This is a new you know, package format, it's brand new. So there's going to be some bugs to work out and this is definitely one of them. As time goes on, we'll notice this less and less until things get better. But for right now, it is the case that some universal apps might stand out. Now, of course, there's gonna be a few other pros and cons I'm not going to get into. The thing is universal applications are awesome. They provide the user one thing to install and developers one thing to develop for. But there's one benefit when it comes to universal apps that I didn't go over until now. And here's the thing, the concept of a universal app fixes an important problem. It keeps user space applications out of the operating system. 
The thing is, many distributions out there will package user space apps with system libraries. It makes no sense. I mean, why is Apache in the same repository as the Linux kernel? In fact, it's my opinion that distribution repositories, you know, the classic way of doing it, should be limited only to operating system packages and zero user apps. At this point, I think it's time to move to universal apps. I mean, why are we going to have Apache in the same repository as our operating system? It just doesn't make any sense. Worse, the operating system might only update every six months. So if you're using distribution packages, then your you know versions of apps might be locked to an old version. It's just not a good way of doing things and we need something better. And thankfully we do, universal apps. Now to be fair, universal apps are not perfect. So I don't want to sell this to you as the perfect solution because there are some bugs to work out. I just brought up theming, for example, and there's a few others out there, a few odds and ends, things that need to be worked out. This solution, this concept is not fully formed as of yet, but it's very far along. I predict in the future, that's how everyone is going to be installing apps when it comes to Linux. And I can't wait for that day to come because it's a great thing. For now though, if you want to use universal apps, there might be a few things that you have to, you know, ignore, maybe work around until the concept is fully formed. But the thing is, universal apps are awesome and I think it's time for the Linux community to stop the stigma. Anyway, what did you think of this video? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.